Welcome to our first of three lessons on building an external Geneva mechanism. That's what you're looking at right now in the graphic area. Currently, you're seeing a drive constraint of the finished assembly. Just like in our case study on the internal Geneva mechanism, instead of making calculations to determine the parameters of the mechanism, we're going to use geometric constraints. Let's get started. We're going to begin with a new part document. Let's go to the metric tab, standard part document in millimeters, and click OK. Now I'm going to begin with a circle. Let's place it about here. Right click and done. When we create geometry and convert it to blocks, some geometry actually is not able to be converted. For example, projected geometry and circular patterns. There is a way around this. What we can do is create the block first and then afterward make edits to the block. For example, applying a circular pattern. Let's click on Create Block. I'm going to select the circle. We'll call it Wheel. A few words about the insertion point. By default, the insertion point is the center of the geometry that's selected for inclusion within the block. I'm not going to select the location of the insertion point, but I do want to make it visible, so I'll check Visibility and click OK. Now let's double click on our block. This opens it up for editing. Notice we've got two points at the center of the circle. This point here is the center of the circle. This point here is the center of the block. Right now the insertion point floats freely. Let's snap it to the center of the circle and let's apply a fix constraint. Now some dimensions. Let's make this circle 200 millimeters in diameter. OK. And let's drop two more circles. Activate the circle command. And two. Right click and done. Construction geometry. And let's dimension the circles. This one will be 10 millimeters. And we'll make the construction circle 90 millimeters in diameter. OK. Now I'm going to create some geometry for the slot. Let's activate the Rectangle tool. We'll drop it about here. Now a tangent arc. Notice that when I touch the corners of the rectangle, one of the sides of the rectangle gets highlighted. Depending upon which side is highlighted, the arc is going to be tangent to that side. and another arc at the bottom. Right click and done. Let's control select these lines, convert them to construction geometry, and let's apply some dimensions now. The radius of the arc first, we'll make it 5.5 millimeters. And let's apply constraints now. Deselect everything. This point is going to be coincident to the circle. Lastly, a vertical constraint. Now we're going to apply the circular pattern tool. We begin by selecting the geometry to pattern. Next, the axis around which the pattern will be created, this point. Number of instances, 5. And let's click OK. Next thing we're going to do is create a cut for the locking mechanism. It's going to be a circular cut. In order to cut, we need to establish the center of the circle. So let's take a moment to figure out how our mechanism will work, and then we can establish our cut. The pin is going to need to enter at this point here, and then the crank pin will exit at this point. The pin path will have to stay outside of this circle here. Let's activate the circle command. Click on For Construction, place our circle about here, right click and done. Now let's apply a coincident constraint between the circle and this point. The circle and this point. Now a tangent constraint between the circles. 
and here we find the center of the crank, as well as the center of the circular cut for the locking mechanism. Let's activate the circle tool, unselect for construction, and drop the circle about here. Apply dimensions now. We'll give it a radius, or a diameter rather, of 105 millimeters. OK. Let's trim. Circular pattern tool again. First we select the geometry to pattern. And the axis to pattern around. Number of instances, 5. Let's click OK. Zoom to fit. Let's trim our geometry now. And here. OK, right click and done. Let's select and delete this circle. We don't need it anymore. And let's apply the Auto Dimension tool just to catch any dangling geometry. Apply. And done. We're finished editing the block. Let's click Finish. And let's activate Sketch 1 now. Double click. Let's apply some constraints here. To prevent the wheel from moving, we apply a vertical constraint between these two points. Right click and done. Next, I'll create the geometry for the crank wheel. Since the crank wheel won't contain any geometry that inventor might struggle with converting to a block, I'm going to create the geometry now and then convert it to a block later on. With the wheel, you'll recall, I created the block first. Let's activate the circle command and drop a few circles here. And the last one will be a construction circle. Let's snap to this point. Right click and done. And let's apply dimensions. Since the diameter of the cut is 105 millimeters, and I want some clearance between the locking mechanism and the wheel, Remember I'd mentioned I need it to be 0.5 millimeters. This diameter should be 104 millimeters. So let's enter that here and click Accept. Now let's draw a center point arc. Right click and done. Dimensions. Once again, I want a half millimeter clearance between the wheel and the locking mechanism. Since the diameter of the wheel is 200 millimeters, the radius of the center point arc needs to be 100.5 millimeters. OK. And now let's trim. Lastly, here we need to create a mounting hole and a pin. The position of the pin is at the point where these two circles are tangent to each other. And let's place a point. Right click and done. Now we'll apply a coincident constraint between the point and this line. And between the point and the circle. Another circle. And another circle here. Let's apply an equal constraint to both circles. And now a dimension. 10 millimeters in diameter. OK. Since the slot is 11 millimeters wide and the pin has a 10 millimeter diameter, we're going to have a half millimeter clearance on both sides. We'll also have a half millimeter clearance along this arc. And we're finished the crank geometry. We're ready to create a block. Let's give it a name. We'll call it Crank. And now we'll select the geometry to include this circle, these two circles, this arc, this circle as well. And the insertion point, let's specify here, make it visible, click OK. 
Let's double click on the crank now. To make the geometry more stable, let's apply auto dimensions. We see that three more dimensions are needed. Let's apply a fix constraint here. One more dimension is needed. And accept. The sketch is fully defined, so let's finish the editing of the block. Lastly here, we need to create the base. Since the base is fairly simple geometry, we can create it as a part of sketch 1. Or, we can simply measure the distance between the center of the wheel and the crank. Plus, we will need the diameter of the holes, and we can create the base as a separate inventor document. Notice my measurement here. My distance is 111.067 millimeters. Since we have a half millimeter clearance, this will be okay. In the event of a situation where you need higher precision, you're able to increase the precision of the measurement up to eight decimal places. Left click on the customize arrow, scroll down to precision, and select any value that you need. And let's cancel out of the minimum distance display. Let's return to the Sketch tab, activate the Circle command, now the Line tool, and look for the Tangency Glyph. Left-click when you see it, Trim, Let's apply dimensions now. 10 millimeters, OK. Same on this side. 10 millimeters, OK. Let's apply a tangent constraint right here. Same thing on the other side. And let's place two more circles. These will be for the mounting pins. Apply an equal constraint. Dimensions, 10 millimeters. OK. And right click and select Done. And let's click Create Block. We're ready to convert our base into a block. The block name will be Base. Select the insertion point. Check Visibility, and click OK. Now let's double-click on the base. And to make the geometry more stable, let's apply dimensions and constraints. A fixed relation here and here. And the sketch is now fully constrained. OK, let's save our work. We'll call it Layout. It's located in the folder for Lesson 29, and we'll see you back in our next lesson.